Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to another Mac 84 live stream. I am Steve and I am very happy to have you here today. My goodness, we have 24 people already and uh, apologies for the bit of a late start here, but uh, my machine um, that I, I use to stream this, which is a 2009 Mac Pro and the computer I think is fine, but it doesn't like Bluetooth. So <laughs> I've been trying with these keyboards uh, this one used to work. Now, I think there's something wrong with this the battery or whatever. This is the magic keyboard. Uh, and this is just a, the regular uh, battery one. And this may have low batteries. Maybe that's why the lights are pulsating. I don't know. But I couldn't get either of them to connect. So I have this bulky, wide USB keyboard on my desk over there, which is making typing interesting. Uh, Retro Techie, that is exactly what I am itching for for my main machine. Not necessarily this one, but uh, that would probably solve a lot of my problems here now, wouldn't it? But can't exactly go out and afford to buy one of those, let alone two. But uh, let's say hello to everybody in the chat here. We have Mike from Mike's Mac Shack first here. Thank you very much, Mike. We have Sad Mac. We have Jay. So Jay's popping in. Then he's going to go mow his lawn or play around the garage. Then he's going to come back. We have Keith. We have Starbuck Tech. We have Hot Rod. We have Retro Techie. We have Bruce. Hello, Bruce from Brankus Creations. Uh, who else is here? Uh, we have Sam. Hello, Sam. And Thomas, Commodore Fan 64. Uh, Joe is here. Let's see. Woofy Bear is here. Uh, Brian is here. Hello, Brian. And yes, it would fit directly on my mini stack. That'd be perfect. Uh, and I, I actually was thinking about it. Um, not that I'm giving away or selling anything right now, but I'm just thinking about it. Like, <laughs> I have a lot of like Intel Mac Pro machines that I really don't know what the heck I'm going to do with. So. I don't know if now is a good time to sell them or, you know, wait 20 years and have them be rare Steve Jobs and, and you know, all this stuff. But um, honestly, a, a Core i5 Mini would probably kick the crap out of <laughs> the issues I'm doing now. But, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see about that. But obsolete Tech, hello. NK Morpheus, hello. Anybody I missed, uh, just give me a shout in the chat. I might have missed you. But anyway, um, my goodness. Um, <laughs> I don't think Gray would buy them. Um yeah, so I have a lot of backlog uh, piling up, a lot of stuff that I have to do. Um, so this webcam works fine. Uh, hello, Apple Synonymous. Um, but uh, yeah, the, the I think it's a uh, a combination of bad keyboards because this was from an e-waste place. I know this has problems. It was too good to be true to have a magic keyboard for literally free. Um, and uh, the USB hub on this thing has always been. Bleh. In fact, I took the USB card out, USB 3 card out, so I'm just running on the USB ports on this Mac, which isn't happy anyway. So anyway, long story short, I have problems. Um, so I have a backlog of things that I need to repair, and we're going to hopefully get to some of those today. Um, I do want to talk about uh, some projects I'm working on. Um, so you saw, you might have seen, uh, the video that... Uh, <laughs> Talk about that in a minute, Mike. Uh, the video that I did about the... Um, what, what, what did I do a video about? Oh, this. It was the uh, Daystar um, PowerPC upgrade card. That spoiler alert. Um, I had fixed for my good friend Sean. And so I'm very much waiting for Sean of Action Retro to uh, test that out in his Quadra 700. His Jurassic Mac and see if that works out in his machine, because it worked fine in my Centrus. It didn't work in my Quadra. It made an awful garbled power-up uh, startup chime there, but, yeah, I don't I don't know. Um, anyway, um, yeah, so that was fun. Uh, I didn't, I wasn't necessarily looking for more projects, obviously, but um, he got that card, uh, if you saw his video, which, if you haven't seen the video, I would suggest go checking that out. He got that card, and it was in good-looking condition, but it, it just didn't want to work and so and <laughs> and so what uh i ended up doing was asking him to send it to me and i i just uh, literally as soon as i opened the box as i said in the video i saw the bent pin so i'm like well now i gotta now i gotta look at it hey tom welcome to the chat and so that's that's why i ended up doing a video about that i ended up fixing it i said well that makes for good content usually i try and fix things and they don't work so yay um so that was uh something i ended up doing um, and I actually, I actually, uh, well, they're, they're kind of, they're kind of buried here. I'll grab one just to keep you guys up to date on what the heck I'm doing. I bought some lights. So these are, uh, for lighting, uh, the backdrop of my, 
my videos and my face and myself when I'm doing videos on the other side of the basement. And there's no lights because all I have is shop lights. I have probably five shop lights in this entire basement. Not nearly enough light. Uh, so when I do my videos, the lighting is sort of weird. I have to string lights up with literal strings and stuff like that. So hopefully that will resolve the issue. And because uh, my good friend Jay from the House of Moth, who is probably not watching anymore, uh, was so insistent that I need more lighting, you know, RGB lighting in the in my studio. Um, I got these lights that could be different colors. So, ooh, thank you, Jay, for the suggestion. I know how much you love RGB lights. So that's where I got these to make as many colors as you want to fulfill your dreams. So, yeah. All right, let's just uh, follow up with some of the chat here. Yeah, it's an old uh, Dell Optiplex thing. Had a serial port on it. That was the only reason... <laughs> I was trying to get anything out of it. Oh, boy. Yeah, so this, uh, the reason this PC is out here, I'll just explain real quick. Um, unplug this. Uh, this is a label printer. And all it does is print on labels. It's very nice. It's USB. Um, so it's USB. It could plug into a, a PowerPC Mac and, and whatever and print it out. Um... And it works great. There's no problem with this. However, I had the crazy idea. Crazy, crazy, crazy idea. Ooh, I want to get this working on a on a, a vintage Mac or something. Um, and maybe at VCF East, um, I have I have this silly idea, and it, it has not um, panned out yet. But I have, you know, one of these old Connectix cameras and a printer. And I thought, oh, this is kind of portable. I could make a little uh, thing where people could come up, they could take their photo, and you could print it out on the label or something. Uh, so this printer has a serial port as designated by the, uh, 6PC6 or whatever, the, the RJ11, RJ12 type phone connector there. Um, and the problem is, um, the pinout is, is kind of not really confirmed. Uh, the older version of these have a pinout in there. And so what I tried to do was I tried to make, um, an adapter to go from, uh, that phone jack there. To a serial port and it didn't seem to want to work so that's why the PC was out here because obviously the PC has a serial port on it uh, I did try my PC laptop <laughs> just sitting under the PC desktop uh, because I had this USB to serial adapter but um, I had to deal with drivers with this just to get this to work so I said, let me cut out the middleman here let me just go to a PC that has a darn serial port soldered onto the board there hey Kaden and uh, figure out let me just you know do that um, yeah, but photo booth isn't isn't 68k and vintage. I guess it, I guess it kind of is retro, but I don't know. I, and then I don't want to lug the image writer there, because I'm I'm not going to um, I'm not going to essentially be uh, there the entire day. Unfortunately, I have prior obligations. Um, I have a wedding to go to, so I can't be there for the entire time. So I don't want to hit the lug all this stuff that I I can't easily bring back. But anyway. Um, let's take a look at some of the stuff that we'll be working on today, and we'll just generally get there. Now, of course, the light from my microscope keeps falling off, and I put some new tape on that last time, and that has done diddly squat because it is still falling off, so that is quite annoying. You pay uh, hundreds of dollars for a microscope, and you, you get the adapter for the lighting, and it's supposed to screw on there, and yeah, it doesn't, because mm, measurements or something. So, I'm going to have to tape that back on or something. Go to a new stream? No, we've stuck with me. Unless you you go somewhere, I'm, I have no control over what you do. But um, <laughs> and Mike will be there. Hopefully, Mike could be there all day. Well, not all day, but he could hang around. That'd be fun. Um, transistor testing duty. That sounds like fun. All right, I'm gonna just I'm just like pushing the tape in here. It's probably not gonna hold, but anyway, um, the machine we're gonna be looking at today is take it out of here and let's see if anybody could identify what type of a board this is I know Bruce knows Mike may know what type of a board is this what's the giveaway here it tells you what type of a board this is well yeah it's an Apple board retro tech you ain't you getting uh, any bonus points for that guess <laughs> And Bruce, Bruce uh, puts the icing on the cake there. Yes, this is a Classic 2 board. And the reason you could tell the difference between a Classic and a Classic 2 board is the memory slots. 
So the Classic 1 does not have any onboard memory. It has that expansion where you plug in the memory too. So the Classic 2 actually has the memory slots on there. <laughs> and so this is a Classic 2 revision A, as Bruce pointed out, because it has four ROM uh, pieces here instead of two that the later boards had. So this has four. So the memory slots say, hey, that's a Classic 2. And that says this is, uh, this is uh, an earlier revision. So it's already recapped, I know. And so why would we be looking at this thing? Well, this was the infamous glue Macintosh Classic 2. Uh, if any of, of you guys had been for the, here for that stream, you know this was interesting. Uh, therefore, some of the caps here are in very interesting um, positions uh, because there was a lot of glue there. There were no pads to hold on uh, to things. So what I had basically had to do was put some of the caps here, and you could see how sort of lopsided and, and poking out of the board these are. Um, and so the problem with this is it does start up, but there is no sound. And so I promised the individual I would take a look at the sound, and I don't know how many months ago that was. I've just been swamped with work, uh, both, you know, fun work and work work. And so I'm going to take another look at it here, see if I missed anything, um, see if anything got screwed up during the ultrasonic clean, whatever. Um, so I'm going to take a look at that, and yeah, uh, I don't really know where to begin on this, but we're going to look around and we're going to poke around, and... Uh, yeah, see if we could figure out the sound issue here. Um, I know that I took the little plastic piece off of this, and I might have lost that, so I'll have to steal it from one of mine to replace it. But uh, essentially, this audio jack has this little physical switch that when you plug... Uh, do I have a plug here? When you plug an audio jack, uh, an audio device into there, it actually physically moves this switch, which tells it to use the internal speaker or the external speaker. And uh, none of that functionality seemed to work. So there seemed to be no sound whatsoever, um, which is making me believe maybe it's something related to the sound trip, a bad trace, a bad connection, or something like that. No, we didn't add more glue to the board. My goodness, though. So this was the hot glue board. Uh, this guy, I believe, sent it off to somebody to uh, recap, and the pads weren't there, so their idea was, well, we can't get anything to stay on the board, so let's use hot glue. And their, their, pad, their caps weren't even touching anything. So... That was not fun. So we're going to try and rectify the situation, and I have no idea how this is going to go. I also have an SE30 that used to work fine after a stream, and, and now it just doesn't. So uh, serves me right for not sending it back right away, because it sort of failed on its own again. So, all right, so let's uh, turn on the light here. I'm sure this is going to fall off the microscope as soon as we get cozy here. But you know what? Things happen. So I am very close to the other camera here. Ah. Let's move that back a little bit. You don't need to see up my nose and such. Well, maybe you do, but um, of course these wires are, of course, crossing themselves. But uh, we'll, we'll oh, yep, exactly. That was going to happen. Uh, let's move the camera like that. Uh, oh boy. Well, look, I've seen a lot of strange things, and uh, glue is. Uh, not the worst I've seen, unfortunately. So I believe the sound chip, and this is where our pal Bruce comes into hand, I believe the sound chip is this guy right here. So I'm going to just follow some traces here. I'll just make sure I'm not going crazy. Yeah, I mean, hot glue is great for some instances, but uh, yeah, so we're going to take a look at the port there. Um, yeah, there's definitely some you know, crud on it, but it, nothing that I would necessarily see that is not working. So I'm going to get the multimeter out. It's not fixed yet. Retro Techie, a.k.a. J Jr. Alright, so let's get the multimeter out here. Continuity mode. Beep, beep, beep. And I'm going to flip the board over, and we're just going to touch some of these pins here. And I'm going to see if I get any reaction of them touching where they need to be. Doesn't seem like we're getting much, but um, it would help if I had a cable. So let me get an audio cable that I can shove in here. Now this audio cable I think is a little finicky, but it'll, it'll work for our, our tests, I believe. Maybe, just adding more variables here. 
Uh, maybe it'll work. Maybe I don't know. And I dropped the cable on the floor. Hey, Dan. Welcome to the stream. Mmm, oatmeal. All right, so let's try and get some of this. I know you're not, uh, you know, I'm looking at the, there, there, I'll put something under the microscope so it's a little exciting. Exciting, exciting, right. Right the center of the port there, there we go, oh, there we are. Um, so basically, um, we're just going to see if any of these pins here are going to correspond to any of the bits on the other side of the port. Now, all right, so that's fine. All right, so we, we do get we do get some connection here. Uh, I didn't mitch much, Eric. We, we just started here. Uh, we're taking a look at the infamous glue Macintosh Classic 2 board. Um, I was just checking the bottom to make sure things were connected correctly. Uh, this board has some interesting issues here. Um, and we're just going to double check our work from last time because I think the sound did work initially. So it might have just been something that was just slightly not connected um but who knows who knows i'm getting a nice glimpse of my forehead here as i do this work jeez okay so i i think this yeah this board was cleaned but it might have been cleaned only before the repair and, and there goes the stupid light Nothing wants to work today, work today, work today. Nothing wants to work today. Steven's going to have a fit. All right, well, I have some masking tape here. So let's, let's see. Let's, let's add, add more tape. Well, this masking tape is pretty poor. I almost turned into a uh, Rooster profanity laden uh, stream there for a moment. Oopsie, can't have that. Well, at least not for this stream. <laughs> Okay, let's add more tape to this garbage and see if that wants to hold. Hey, Sean, welcome to the chat. Let's see if that'll work for 10 minutes. All right, so this is the glue board that uh, now has sound issues or had sound issues from the start. And so we're basically just checking everything here. I believe this is the sound chip here. This big old guy right here. And I'm just going to be checking everything to make sure they're going... Uh, all those ports are going where they where they are. So pads of glue. So let's just follow some things here. So I believe yeah, let's put our probe there, maybe. All right, so that's making it there. Okay, that's good. Um, let's see here. Okay, so that's good. It could just be some... Uh... Hey, Chris, thank you for joining the stream. Always nice to see somebody joining us for the first time here. So we're looking at a Macintosh Classic 2. I should really put that on the bottom of the stream because, yeah. Uh, the reason this board looks so hard is, well, it sort of had to, unfortunately. Uh, there was a bit of a problem with the previous individual who repaired this. Uh, not the person that sent it to me, but the person that repaired it. And unfortunately, uh, it uh, kind of didn't want to work anymore after that. Uh, so I had to replace the capacitors and build some pads here. And this UV solder mask was to sort of cover up some of the horridness that was there. And uh, we did our best to make it look pretty. But I know it looks ugly, but that's just, that's just how it is sometimes. Eep! Eep, indeed. So, starting to believe that maybe this wasn't uh, cleaned afterwards. I it, it might have been, but it, it might have been sitting uh, in the chassis of the, the Classic 2 and got some more dust or grime or crud on it. But, uh, it's going to clean up some of these areas by the memory chips here. Just making sure I'm not seeing anything else that would potentially cause any audio problems. Now, this was a fun area over here, I remember. Oh, boy, yeah. We had a lot of fun over here last time. Yes, we did. So you could see where some of those pads were just gone. Absolutely gone. That was fun. 
Ah, oh, boy. And so, yeah, let's let's make sure none of this stuff got loose or anything like that. Where, where is this one? Come on, this is going there, maybe? No. All right, so that line is correctly going through here, which goes to there. That's fine. Ooh, that's a lot of gunk right there. Try and just see if there's anything weird going on here besides the the look of this board. That we know that is weird. We definitely know that is weird. Okay. Okay. Make sure nothing is bridging anything. And that's fine. Okay, that's fine. Okay, I mean that it's it's all looking like it is currently connected, so we're just gonna keep on going here. Okay, that's fine. Let's see where this pin is going here. Set it on under this chip here. Okay, so that's going under here. Now here, where's this guy going? This goes maybe up here. All right, that seems to be making a good connection there. So, okay. <laughs> Zip ties. <laughs> Oh boy. Yeah, so I, I'm uh, tempted just to fire this up again to see if uh, it has changed its tune, quite literally. Um, and if not, we'll give this an ultrasonic bath later. Uh, this stream will be jumping around from a few different machines here. Uh, we have another SE30 that has all of a sudden gone to the forbidden bars of death. And um, well, that was previously working in a stream, so unfortunate. I'm going to try and get that to work again. Um, this glue is supposed to be there, don't worry. Making sure we didn't screw up anything else here. Get some of this hair here off of there. I mean, this will be cleared, cleaned again, but just making sure that anything uh, that we did repair is uh, functioning as it should. Make sure that's not... Yeah, this definitely needs a clean so uh, this could just be solved by a clean maybe but uh, I'll have to get it under the microscope again just to make sure we didn't miss anything but at least the thing does boot up it does boot up pretty fine it's uh, happy when it boots up so that's good just make sure we don't have any solder balls sitting between anything important here make sure all those legs look like they're nice and connected properly Same goes for this chip here. Yeah, this will definitely need a cleaning. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring over a classic chassis and we'll plug this in. We'll see if it gets um, to do anything different than it did before, uh, which was it worked fine, but there was no sound. So I'm going to test that out briefly. Let me uh, move some of my crud around here so we could actually fit some stuff here. Oh, this big old keyboard is actually quite decent so let me switch uh cameras here it's a big old pc keyboard it's actually uh not too bad to type on it's by nec it's an apc h412 it's a ps2 keyboard it is a big boy but i needed a ps2 keyboard and that was the first one i saw around so i grabbed it Oh boy. Yes, the workbench always could use spare tools, spare screws and everything. And I just bought a bucket of screws. Where did they go? 
<laughs> oh god, this is this is the problem. I I, I order things and I'm like, oh, I need that, and then it arrives and soon disappears. Here's the empty box that came, and that doesn't help me. Well, anyway, enough of that nonsense. Put this PC on the floor where it belongs. Actually, not a bad little PC, but put that on the ground there because we have to uh, put a Mac Classic chassis where this uh, pile of Lenovo laptops is. Where can I shove these? Shove them under the desk where nobody can see them and where I will forget they are in about five minutes. We didn't miss much. We were looking at the. Uh, Macintosh Classic 2 that had some glue on it and we are about to drag out the classic chassis from this side of the basement and I will be right back and we'll see if this board has improved at all. Alright, and let me get uh, my SCSI adapter. I'm quite uh, mad at myself. I ordered uh, literally, I think it was like 10 uh, micro SD cards. Let's see if I can fix the. Uh, white balance on this camera here yeah it's a little better um, I ordered basically like 10 micro SD cards to work with like my SCSI adapters and stuff like that and um, I remember opening the package I remember taking the SD cards out I have no idea where they are so yay ah, boy. But um, uh, I was going to ask you about sending my leaking cap Mac a classic two board. Well, you're welcome to do that. I don't know when uh, I'll honestly get to it, but go to Mac84.net. Don't email me, but go to Mac84.net. Click on the services button and fill out a form there. If you've done so already and I have not responded to you, it's just because I've been busy. No, no uh, offense or anything like that. It's just been super busy. So I'm going to take this board out of here. And this is my classic board so this is my personal board here put a little sticker on it so I know this one's mine um, I I should do that and I actually have so at the the top of the shelf over here past all the crap that shelf at the top that's where all the repairs and stuff go so I, I don't mix that up with any of my other crap and yeah so and my basement's a mess it's always gonna be a mess and I'm just stopping fighting it at this point. Anyway, um, so here's a classic one board. This works fine. Um, oh, GPU issues on a 2011 iMac. Oh, that sucks. I know, because I've been there myself, my friend. That is no fun at all. All right, so let's try and get uh, this booted up. So I think I have, yeah, these are, are one meg memory modules here. So we're going to, I'm just going to put some extra memory on here because I think the uh, blue SCSI here is set up for system 7.5. And if I had my spare memory cards, I would set up one with 7.1. I think I actually have a partition with 7.1, but I th think I have to rename it. Well, let's figure it out. Uh, who wants to try and test things? No, we want to just plug things in and see what happens. All right, so... I like the uh, Classic and the Classic 2 because the board just slides in there very easily. You don't really have to worry too much. And we'll find a SCSI cable. I had a monstrously long one before. Here we go. Okay. Plug that guy in here. Oh, you have to seek this... Uh, this board correctly. There we go. And don't worry, I'll get the camera closer once I plug everything into this thing. 
And I'm using my friend Orlando's Macintosh uh, Classic 2, and I actually got the capacitors for it. The reason I was hanging on to it is I recapped his board ages ago, but he asked me to recap the analog board, and I'm not really into that. Um, takes a lot of time, but I ordered a kit for him because I, I told him I would do it, so uh, this will be the first one I do. Fingers crossed. I'm not going to be doing that today. I have to build my... Um, I have all the things. I have the screwdriver, I have the tape and everything, the alligator clip. I just have to build a, a discharging thing and do that. Because um, you have to on this particular model because everything is connected that way. I, mean, I guess you could get around it without doing it, but I don't want to. I want to actually do it correctly. Um, uh, I wouldn't say that's toast, Frederick. It might just be corroded in that particular area. Um, it might just, you know, send a photo. That's probably the best way to, to take a look at it. Um, it, it could be corroded in a certain area. The solder could be old. It could have been pushed or tugged or something like that. So, all right. So uh, we have that set up. We're going to take our blue SCSI, which is a fantastic little alternative to the Mac SD or the SCSI SD and the SCSI 2 SD and all that fun stuff. Uh, they're pretty affordable too. So take a look at them if you want uh, a nice and affordable solution for your vintage Macintosh. Uh, they work best on 68K machines now, although I keep hearing reports that they are working pretty well with Power Max as well. So I'm going to try and situate some of that camera and junk around here. And I knocked off the very moment I dabbed a Q-tip with eyes. Well, that sounds like fun. Uh, hopefully it's nothing too bad. Uh, if you could identify what chip and what circuit it is and all that fun stuff, uh, it probably wouldn't be a, a bad uh, thing to try and get that replaced. All right, so we're going to be looking at my crummy basement here. Uh, where is my keyboard? Where did I put the... We were going around in the chair. Uh, where did the ADB keyboard somewhere? There it is. Oh, we can get the, uh, the one that looks like it's been out in the sun too long, but that's okay. Uh, we're just testing things out here. It's really weird to just talk to yourself for, like, hours on end. But that's the business I'm in. Well, thank you. Yeah, so that that uh, is a Sony CRT that was rescued from an e-waste site. It was just going to be destroyed. That Sony CRT was just going to be destroyed. Uh, there's my SE uh, that I used to test, my Macintosh SE, and then there's a Forma 550, uh, which is a very nice machine. So, Classic 2. Okay, well, hopefully we could get uh, get that working again, or I could just give you some advice, you know. Okay, so plugged in properly here. Uh, we're going to get a power cable. Power this sucker up. I'm going to see if it does anything different. Let me get my mouse. Let me plug that in. Uh, you never want to hot wire or hot plug ADB or SCSI stuff. An e-waste site or an e-waste place is somewhere where either a township says, hey, come here and dump the e-waste for the day so we could collect it all or there's an actual facility or a building that collects it and then sells it or repurposes it or whatever, they make money on it. But sometimes like an e-waste dump site, that was literally on like in a field, like a, a, a gravel field. So, All right, let's see if this does anything different. No chime at all, so there's no sound, but thing comes on. So it doesn't look like we are we are getting anything different from this. Uh, yes, I did see Adrian's video. Very cool. Um, it, it's uh, something that's very neat because obviously um, the video on the uh, machine is driven by the logic board, so you can get video out of the board somehow. So using those adapters and tools was a, a pretty neat little thing that Adrian got to work there. This might do a boot loop here because we don't have enough memory. Yeah, I don't think it's happy with... <laughs> with the uh, system I have on here. Um, oh, there it goes. Yeah, but uh, what Adrian did is very cool. I'd love to do that um, for one of my machines. Um, I, I did get a MacFX Clear SE, SE30 case uh, last summer. And I'll finally put that together sometime soon, I hope. Yeah, there are a lot of different gears out there. A lot of people 3D print them. A lot of people have them on eBay. Um... There's a lot of them that are out there. Yeah, so this board works great. It's starting up, um, but there is no sound, which is frustrating. <clears throat> mm. 
Yeah, I, I actually have never fixed a floppy drive like with the gears or anything like that. I haven't had the need to because whenever one breaks, I just find another drive. Very inefficient. I know, but that's just... Didn't have time to play around with them, and I... It's just like, whatever. Just do it this way. I know, I know, I know. All right, so let's... Uh... No, it's not, Jane. You missed, you missed all the excitement. All right, so this will definitely take a uh, bath in the ultrasonic cleaner. Maybe that will we'll fix it up. Who knows? I'm going to try and go to the sound control panel. I don't expect it to make any noise from there. Um, I do have a floppy emu. Floppy emu works great. So we got four megs here. This poor little Macintosh is running System 7.6 with four megabytes of memory. Oh, I'm sorry, fella. I'm really sorry. <laughs> oh. Yep, yep, there are plenty of videos out there. I'm not saying um, I lack the skills or knowledge to do it, I just haven't gotten around to it. Yeah, so we're not getting any sound out of this, unfortunately. I don't know if it's a sound chip issue. Um, it, something definitely could have been zapped. I have to go back to the stream and see. Uh, you know, from, from the previous person recapping it, uh, or the chip could be bad. There could be a bad trace or something like that. So we're going to shut this off for now. Uh, Poppy Lake CPU. Yeah, I hear those are like getting hard to find, but they're like old. And that's kind of weird. Interesting times we live in. Okay, so I'm going to take the uh, board out of here. There goes the, the case to this blue SCSI keeps falling off. I don't know if I just have the pins too long on this device or what, but. It does not like to stay in there. Probably my own fault. I'm not blaming the person who 3D printed it at all. <laughs> in fact, I'm absolutely sure I'm doing something wrong. Uh, and I'm so lazy, I'd probably just put a rubber band around it to keep this held in. But anyway, uh, we're going to take our adapter and cable out of here. We're going to take our board out of here. And this will be something we, we fuss around on for another day. It's still the king, though. I have a Molder Mac. Yes, I have a G3 all-in-one, and I like that thing. Except it's really heavy, which has prevented me from <laughs> bringing it over to this side of the basement. Oh, my goodness, that thing is heavy. <laughs> no, 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 Tom. It is not yourself. I I could clearly see the pins from the bottom of the blue SCSI adapter, because I, I have not... Uh, I didn't trim the ones for the blue pill, so those are still sticking up pretty, pretty tight. So I'm sure what's happening is that's hitting the plastic there. Not your fault. Do not blame yourself, sir. You are a scholar among Macintosh men. Macintosh men? Sure, we'll go with that. Um. <laughs> All right, so this will go back in the anti-static bag uh, because we'll have to ultrasonically clean this. And that is not something I want to do uh, with a bunch of you guys because it would be a loud noise. Um, oh, you're welcome very much, Alex. Um, <laughs> no, I don't want to let my Mac catch fire, throw up, throw up, blow up. Um, oh, well, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that, Frederick. Yeah, that, uh, my goodness, that, uh, that was a, a series of very interesting events. Um, as I said in the video, I was literally down here in my basement working on something, I was working probably on this board or another board, um, you know, a similar classic board. And um, I don't know, Jay, it just happens. And I uh, saw that post on one of the Facebook groups, was it Low and Mac or, or uh, Macintosh Enthusiast? And it was, you know, just a per person posting a picture of that G3 all in one, and it was dumped. And I immediately thought, oh, well, someone saw the picture already and they're already on their way there or they already picked it up or whatever. I always find out these things too late. And I started following the thread and, and the guy was like, no, I just, I saw it there. I couldn't take it. I'm all, you know, I'm gone already. And I'm like, 
that's weird. Maybe it's still sitting there. And the more I thought about it, the more I was like, maybe I should go grab it or try to. And as I said in the video, if you haven't seen it, go watch it. But as I said in the video, it was like a lot of variables there. Would the e-waste site be open there? Would it be roped off? Would I even be allowed to go up there? It was like over two hours away from me. So it was quite a gamble. It was going to rain and all this stuff. But I am so glad I did. I got the G3 all-in-one. I got the clone. Uh, I got so many other cool things. I got that, that big Sony CRT monitor right there, which works beautifully. Not a scratch on the darn thing. I mean, the plastic is a little beat up, but who cares? The display works great. Um, oh my goodness. Yeah. And so I, I, uh, I, that was a lot, of, that was a lot of fun, that, uh, video to make. And, uh, I get so many comments of like, oh, I'll do more of these. It's like, well, the circumstance has to be just right for me to like tell a story about that. Cause the story actually has to happen. You know, that, that happened. I can't just snap my fingers and you know, uh, my brother is calling me. Uh, let me just tell him I am uh, a little busy. Hold on. Hello. I'm doing a live stream right now. You're, you're, you're not, your audio is not there, but people can see me on the phone. What's up? <laughs> you gave me an old one, Pablo or something like that. I have to find it. Okay. It's an old IDE one. It was in a black case. I have no idea, but it probably was. Yeah, I don't have anyone with it. The one I had, the enclosure was already open. No, I didn't touch any of it. It's probably still on my shelf. <laughs> I'll help you look for it. Don't worry. Okay. Everyone says hi. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody know where my brother's hard drive is? <laughs> All right, Tom. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> he was trying to find out where one of his hard drives uh, was. So I don't have it. Heck, if I know where my own stuff is. Anyway, um, so this board needs more work. Let's take a look at that SE30 board that also needs more work. So, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> next year spare ssd cards yeah well i'll see you alex thank you for stopping by no worries uh da, 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 da. 450 dollars for a g5 i would pay 45 dollars for a g5 in fact i'd be hard pressed to spend five dollars on a g5 but <laughs> mac 85 no he's younger than i am so he would be anyway um i'm gonna put this back on the shelf um let me uh do that and i'll be right back Oh boy. Okay, let me see. Uh, there's a box here. Uh, where is that box? There's two boxes. I'm trying to remember where I put it. Um, <laughs> oh, where did they go? Oh, it's different from that one. I'm just talking to myself now. Very rude, I know. Um, <laughs> well i'm glad it inspired you to start collecting max there's plenty of excellent max to collect um no matter what you're into so excellent I'm, I'm happy to have passed along this sickness to somebody else um yeah 80 something there we go um yeah exactly it, it the prices of this stuff is a bit silly in, in fact it's a good segue uh, let's not jump into repairing something just yet. I want to talk about something. Let me uh, uh, move this stuff away here. Get my keyboard out, which is on a ridiculously short cable because ooh, reasons. Let's move the camera back so you're not looking up my nose or my teeth or any weird, weird stuff. I'm not into that. Uh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, trust me, that ain't free. All right, so let's take a look at some stuff here. So I want to, uh, let's bring up, let's see, can we do this or screen sharing? Here we go. Yeah, we have a we have a thing all set up for it. How about that? I want to share my screen. I want to talk about some things. So let's do it. Let's do it. So let's, uh, I hope if I actually had the, the web browser up here. Uh, 
Okay. All right. So speaking of Apple prices and their ridiculousness, let's take a look at something that uh, is very early. So you know, it's not, you know, exactly nice or fancy or anything like that. But um, where the heck is the browser window here? Hold on, please. Um, why is it showing everything but that? Well, we'll just give that a second. <laughs> here we go. Oh, that's the wrong one. There we go. Okay, cool. So let me just position this on the screen so we can get this all looking pretty here and make sure it's going to take up the right amount because OBS is a little bit finicky when it comes to this. Okay, cool. So I think you guys are going to like this. This is the beta, alpha, whatever the heck it's called, ApplePriceGuide.com. So this is a website I am working on, um, and it, it pretty much sounds like what it is. Now, I, I will warn you, the prices and information on here are totally temporary and bogus and just completely nonsensical. This is not real. This is testing, 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 testing. So... Uh, the whole purpose of this site is to come here and we have a little thing about, hey, you know, this is what we're doing. Um, and the whole idea here is to display different models of Macintosh computers and what their value is, whether it be, um, you know, the price of a particular computer in what condition, etc. So the idea here is, again, very, very early days here. Uh, you come in, let's say I'd click on the Mac 512K. Uh, it gives you a price range. And then the condition is is usually set to good just by default. That's just like, this is a good model. You know, in good condition, uh, maybe they go for 175 US dollars. Uh, you change this to parts only, goes down to 10 bucks. Fair condition, yeah, $90 if it has the keyboard or whatever. Uh, maybe it's missing it, who knows. Uh, great condition, maybe 300. You know, awesome, has the box, has, you know. All these things have to um, actually be, you know, specced out. Now, I do have a spreadsheet that I've been working on which has the actual information that I've been comparing uh, based on actual things that have been sold, what I have paid for things in the past, what other people have told me they paid for things. So again, Thomas and everybody else, this pricing is just bogus. It's fake information. It's not actual pricing information yet. I just want to show you the site. So, um, you know, you would click on a tab here. Maybe there's some more information here. The description will tell you a little bit about it. Uh, there's the model number here, which is currently listed as a SKU number because this is sort of like a shopping cart type interface. Um, but you're not buying anything. Um, and then there are some tags here. So you click on, let's say you're looking for quadros and you click on that, you see some quadros, etc. Um, so yeah, this is, this is a bunch of stuff here. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so I, I want to get a plus to SE, but people think, wow, well, yeah, these machines can be pricey, but, um, the actual pricing, what I was just saying, is the actual pricing will be based upon uh, details that I've been compiling for the past year or so. Um, and it's based on what people have sold them for uh, on enthusiast groups, not eBay, because that's not a realistic pricing uh, benchmark. Uh, what I bought and sold things for, um, what other people have tell, told me they buy and sell things for, what I'm seeing you know, people on the Facebook groups and stuff selling stuff for, and just knowing, okay, look, the keyboard sells for 100 bucks. If you're selling the computer without a keyboard, it's not worth five hundred dollars, etc. You know, it's just this, this stuff like that. Um, I think, uh, like personally, so Frederick there, uh, personally, an SE with an FDHD drive or a super drive, it's worth a little bit more than a, in a Macintosh SE. Not nearly as much as an SE thirty would be worth, but a little bit more because it has some updated chips in there uh, and all that stuff. So, um, sorry, just catching up on the on the chat here. Um, Thank you. Yeah, there's a. I think the website will be pretty awesome once it's complete. This is just sort of a, a very rough template here. Um, some of the models here are just sort of, um, you know, stacked together here. I was just trying to play around with some things here. Brief description here. Going to have links to every Mac and and uh, you know Apple serial number info and all that good stuff uh, when appropriate. Uh, I think, yeah, this was like five dollars because who who has the space for an iMac like this? 40 bucks in fair condition, good condition about $80, great condition about, let's say, you know, I was just guessing here. Uh, again, this pricing information is, is completely bogus right now, but uh, yeah. Hey, Greg, thanks for joining. And so, yeah, that's basically uh, what I just wanted to show off. Uh, this site is a very, very much work in progress as the welcome page says, all the price details and stuff are just temporary. So 
Uh, but I just want to talk to you a bit about that because that's something that uh, is is I, I've been working on. So uh, also working on some tags and some searching here. So get all that stuff to work. A uh, big shout out to my friend Bruce who knows HTML and CSS and all that fun coding stuff much better than I do. Uh, this is just a simple template and stuff I've set up, but he's been very helpful in already going in there and saying, you know, this kind of bugs me. Can I remove this? And I'm like, yes. So thank you very much, Bruce. Uh, you're going to get a plug for your Recap of Mac website and your YouTube channel because uh, anybody who's following me and watching me and not watching Brankus Creations is a bit silly. So go do that. And Bruce's website, recapofmac.com, is where I get all my recapping guides from. Uh, he has a resources tab here. Let's say you wanted to recap a Macintosh SE, and he has a lovely little diagram here. Uh, and you can download the PDF of it. tells you exactly what capacitors you need. Uh, we can go to another one here. Let's say a Macintosh LC. Or he just added this to his website after me bugging him. Uh, we have a Macintosh LC3. Ooh. And you even have the links to the tantalum caps right there. You can order them uh, directly from Mauser.com. All the values of what you need. So excellent website. If you're not aware of that, I know I talk about it all the time. You guys are probably like, oh, I know, I know. But if you haven't uh, been to that website, be sure to check that out, especially if you are repairing things. All right. So I could make a house out of iMac G3s. Exactly. A lot of people, I think, can. So, yeah, the Plus goes for less than the SE FDHD or the SE for that matter because the Plus requires a proprietary keyboard. Those keyboards are selling, not, not asking price, actually selling anywhere from $75 to $100 plus on eBay because the keyboard is proprietary. You cannot plug in any old other keyboard into it. You can if you have an adapter. I made one of these. It cost me about $25, $30 in parts. Uh, this is simply an adapter that plugs into the Macintosh Plus. There's a teensy USB board to do some programming here. And there's a phone jack here. And basically, uh, oh no, this is not a teensy. I'm sorry, this is an Arduino Nano. Um, and uh, this little phone jack here. And what that does is it basically plugs in and lets you use a PC style PS2 keyboard. There we go. Oh, very much. Thank you for the uh, super chat there, Mitchell. Thank you very much. Props for making this website. It's no small undertaking. Can't wait till it's done. Well, thank you very much for the super chat. Eep. The whole purpose of this website is as the, uh, well, not this website. <laughs> the whole purpose of uh, ApplePriceGuide.com. I should have said the name of the website, shouldn't I? Uh, the whole purpose of ApplePriceGuide.com, if you read the welcome message, uh, is to provide you with a sensible, fair pricing information for your vintage Apple computer. We'll let you know what it's worth and if it's unique. Don't get fooled by eBay scalpers. Uh, not everything with an Apple logo uh, is worth its weight in gold. Uh, our prices are set by enthusiasts and are backed up by confirmed purchases, historical prices, and user feedback. Uh, use our site to understand what the real value of your system is worth before getting scammed. And Mr. Polka Dots need not apply. So there we go. All right, so let's see. Um, just catch up in the chat here. Ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. Yeah, so the keyboard for the Plus uh, is uh, is worth a little bit. Uh, so make sure you have that. And the mouse, of course, is a bit different anyway. Um, yeah, different by... You know, so this, this guide is not going to be like, well, if you're in New York, this price is this. No, this guy's going to be like, look, this is a guide. So obviously... You have something brand new in box. You have something that's, you know, very unique. You have something that's in excellent condition. You're obviously going to ask more for it. And this is a guide. You could ask whatever you want. You give away stuff for free. You could ask for things for $5,000. Doesn't mean you're going to get it. But, um, yeah. Anyway. Okay. So, uh, speaking of, speaking of, of, of this stuff, I'm just curious about something. I wanted to, I wanted to just, uh, Go on to a different website here, because some of you, uh, some of you had a lot of fun uh, when I did this last time, and uh, let's see if we can get this to work here. No, come on. What are you? What, are you, what is OBS doing to me now? What are you? Yeah, doing your silly uh, properties. Yes, save. Okay, and we'll go to here. We go. I uh, I just want to. I just want to look at some things here. Um, oh, well, thank you very much, Frederick. Great, great uh, feedback. Thank you very much. No, 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 no. The, the website will not be fed by eBay. This is a manual site uh, updated periodically by individuals with knowledge of this stuff. Um, eBay is not a realistic pricing guide. I don't care if you look at the sold listings. eBay has an international audience. 
you have buyer protection and all this stuff going on. If you're, this guide is like enthusiast pricing. You're dealing, you're selling this to another individual. You are doing this on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist or something like that. Um, so anyway, um, I wanted to look up something real quick. Um, just wanted to show you guys. Uh, you, I was talking about the Macintosh Plus keyboard before. So here is like what people are asking for a Macintosh Plus keyboard. Um, and so if we go to the actual sold listings here, uh, ba -ba 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 -ba, sold. So that's a pretty good deal. $53. It's missing the key there. Let's just take a look at that. We're just going to chat about things for a bit, if you don't mind. So $53 plus $12 shipping. So that's about, you know, you're out to $65 or something like that. Um, and this looks like it's missing a key cap. Let's see if we could click on the photo here. This is just going to turn into Steve Browse's eBay, which I know some of you appreciate and like. Uh, so this is just missing the uh, three key there, but you have one up there anyway. And it's just the key cap. It actually looks like the stem is there. Not a bad price, to be honest. Uh, I've seen these things go a lot more for in worse condition. Um, these cables you got to watch out for. Some people say, oh, you just use a telephone cable. You actually got to reverse the, the pins there. I've heard it both ways. You actually got to reverse the pins there. Otherwise, you could risk damaging some things. Hey, Adam, welcome. Uh, I am not buying a Mac. No, 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 no. We're, we're, I have enough crap. Um, I'm just taking a look at what uh, things are going for here. Uh, see, you can still get good deals. I'm not saying the keyboard always goes for $100, but uh, here's one $27 shipping. Oh, that's a, that's a hard pill to swallow. Uh, that keyboard could use some cleanup, but it looks like it's complete. So, you know, these are just general values, obviously. Uh, here we have a mechanism there. We have some uh, keycaps there. Uh, what is this? Clean Macintosh Plus board with RAM plus keyboard cable. That's not too bad. But so these are the selling prices. Things have sold. So it looks like uh, it looks like the same one from before. So, yeah, you expect to pay around $80, maybe a little less for some of these keyboards. That's not a big deal at all. $75 free shipping. Uh, of course, some of these may be untested, so you got to be careful. Uh, there are these adapters like this that, uh, well, that's for the Lisa. Uh, there are adapters that uh, people have been selling that do let you use uh, different keyboards on the Plus. Uh, obviously, the difference of the keyboard with the Plus and the Macintosh original one is the Plus has the number pad there. So you do have uh, that number pad built in, which is nice. Uh, the uh, original, oh, that that's in beautiful shape. Look at that. Oh, man, that, that looks like it's in gorgeous shape. Uh, interesting shift key there. This is... This looks like it's uh, is this an Apple one. Oh, it is. Huh. I don't know if I uh, looking for my Plus keyboard. Uh, oh, it's all the way over there. As I don't uh, I don't remember the shift key on the right being uh, so small. But uh, anyway, maybe I'm just misremembering. But yeah, that's that's was not a bad deal at all for eighty eight dollars in, in the condition it's in. Um. Yeah, the yellowing doesn't bother me at all. Uh, I'm not a person that will retrobrite stuff. Oh my goodness, that's a. Oh, I'm going down a rabbit hole here. Oh, you know how much this would cost? Yeah, <laughs> freight. Yeah, <laughs> how much this thing would cost to ship? Oh my goodness. Yeah, these are these are heavy. These are really heavy. I've never lifted one, but I've heard. Oh, look at that. Oh, this poor thing. Oh, no. <laughs> poor little guy. Oh, this guy needs a good home. If this wasn't in California, you'd be in my basement, and not for two hundred dollars, and not for the freight costs. My goodness! But that is that is you don't see those every day, at all. You don't see those every day. Um, well, thank you very much, Dave. I appreciate that. Welcome to the chat. If I didn't say hello to you before, um, yeah, uh, this is this is getting into sort of silly territory. I understand these things are hard to find. Um, honestly, if this was in better shape and the shipping was included, or if I go pick it up, I might spend a hundred bucks on this. I don't know about 200. Uh, these things probably need a lot of work. Um, where are you going to get the toner for it, etc. All these things you have to consider, uh, when you're, when you're paying for something like this. And I'm not a huge printer guy. I have the, I have the image writers cause they're built like tanks and they're fun to play around with. This has some cables and stuff with it, but I have those cables already, but yeah, anyway, um, yeah, this this looks like it. Uh, uh, got oh, got a good deal on the Santi Scuzzi Ethernet boxes today. Oh, very good, Adam. 
Uh, I'll probably add some of those accessories to my website as well, but uh, I think we're just going to go on an eBay uh, trip right now, if you guys don't mind, because it's uh, kind of fun. Uh, well, what deals we got here? You got a, ooh, that's too high. I'd say these are worth about 50 bucks. Maybe if it's all been cleaned and everything, higher than that. I know Sean uh, from Action Retro picked, up, up, uh, picked up one of these for about that price, $50 or so. Uh, at the VCF swap meet, um, this guy says this says it's working. Uh, testing working great. Yeah, and that's the that's the only concern here. If it's working so well, why don't you have a photo of it turned off? I'm just playing devil's advocate here. <laughs> if it's working so well, why don't you have a photo of it turned on? I mean, come on, man. Especially you're asking hundred seventy four dollars for. Free shipping. I would not want this thing shipped. What does he say about the shipping? Uh, oh, free economy. Sh oh, oh, this poor thing. Oh, oh, that's. Oh, that's, that's oh. This looks like it's a 13 inch. Yeah, high resolution is the 13 inch model, I believe. Yeah. Um, yeah, that poor thing is going to get destroyed in shipping, unfortunately. Oh, we got some other goodies here. Looks like he's selling this guy. He's selling this guy. Let's take a look at this guy. Let's say this is uh, for parts or repair. Still wants sixty dollars plus sixty dollars shipping. It's from shipping from Texas. Um, yeah, the back cover is missing on that previous one. Uh, vintage Macintosh, uh, Macintosh monitor, shipped with UPS. Not working. Screen turns on but fades and flickers. Vertical alignment issue. I'm sure there's a bunch of issues with this poor sucker. Um, yeah, I think I have this one, but. Uh, these are nice monitors. Poor thing has had a rough life. Let's see what else we got here. Here's the 12 inch one. Uh, this is a monochrome one. Looks identical to the RGB one, but it's monochrome. I don't think $100 is a good price for this. This is just my personal opinion. Uh, they're neat and all. Oof. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Are all the pins there? <laughs> I would wager we might be missing a pin or two. <laughs> flyback collapse it's trash yeah well that's oh yeah look at that look at the shielding just eating away at this thing oh that's horrible what, what was that like some kind of a chemical reaction or did a mouse like chew the heck through that goodness Good goodness yeah i think this is just turned into a steve looks at ebay and, and laughs at things stream um just browsing around here what is this? I got a Macintosh SE30 Ethernet adapter. 157 US dollars. The guy has two of them. He can make an offer. Um, neat, but uh, I mean, I, I don't need one that badly. Um, uh, let's see what the guy says. Uh, will fit an SE and SE30. Wrong! Wrong, 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 wrong. Because the PDS slot on the SE and the SC30 are different. <sighs> some people. Some people. Yeah, well, good luck if you're buying that for your SE, because I don't think it's going to plug in there. Oh, boy. Yeah, people are stupid and greedy. I mean, look, this guy could probably not... Let's look at his other items. Maybe he's not a computer guy. Oh, never mind. <laughs> he has another one. Uh, he's got some processors. Whatever the heck this is. What kind of a monstrosity is this? Okay. That's one of those... Uh, <laughs> those things you put in your PC case for extra ports and stuff. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I would, I would correct the seller if I wanted my username and stuff to be visible on the screen but i'm not going to do that today um that's some neat stuff i guess but <laughs> penny of three processor three dollars uh 16 gigabyte sd card you're paying a dollar a gigabyte here really is that such a good deal i don't think so yeah anyway that guy's a little bit crazy um ooh, look at this chunky laptop i know it's a dell look, look how chunky that is <laughs> look at it <laughs> Look how thick that is. That is that is as thick as a frying pan. My goodness. Control your rage. Never! 
Oh boy. Yes, this this we are tinkering as I'm I'm tinkering my toes, Jay. You weren't here for all the tinkering, so. Um, yeah, we're just looking at the keyboards there. Ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba 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 -ba. Uh, here's the other one. Oh, this poor thing has the back off of it. What do you do? Break it? Oh, it's ooh. Yeah, no. <laughs> that's that's a big pass from me here. What is my weakness? Um, a lot of beige things. A lot of beige things. Uh, da, 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 da. Exactly as pictured. No chords, parts, accessories. Please see photos for me. <laughs> this poor monitor. Rest in peace, buddy. I don't think you're you're gonna. Oh gosh, not even make it offer hundred dollars. Jeez, but it's rare. It's rare. Yeah, so rare, so rare. Oh, G3 iMac. Oh, good luck shipping that, buddy. At least he shows it turned on. So we got a uh, tray loader here. It's a 333 megahertz model. Not bad. And there's a serial number for you, J. S is in Sam. G as in gold. 9365. U as in Utah. N as in Nancy. G as in gold. T as in Tom. Zero. 333 megahertz model, 32 megs of memory, 6 gig hard drive, CD-ROM drive, 6 megabytes of video memory, 512K cache, modem, and keyboard. Fancy. Yeah, I don't think these are worth $300 at all. I, I would... You'd have to twist my arm to take one for 15 bucks, and that's because I have a garage full of them. Uh, this, this one seller is just a bit silly. What the... Oh, Ruby. Eh, Alright. I could, I could kind of see wanting a bit more for a Ruby one, but... I wouldn't trust anybody to ship this thing. I don't care how careful they are. That plastic ain't as uh, spry as it used to be. This one looks like it has a yellow tint, but that could just be the, the photography gear used. It uh, looks like there's some minor marks on here, but yeah, it's way too much. Way too much. Way too much. Uh, that much money, I'd say, for a flower power, maybe, if you were, like, really into that stuff. But no. What are these? Oh, these IMAX for $200. Are these? What are these people smoking here? Are you absolutely insane? So this is like, yeah, it's a 333 megahertz. I mean, there it's a beautiful machine, but 300 $200? Are you are you kidding? Really? I I uh, let's do a little bit of a let me just see something. I want to see what the sold prices are going for for these things. I'm very curious. And then we'll, we'll get back to non-eBay stuff, because I know this is probably not everyone's cup of tea. All right, they're 160 bucks for iMac with a mismatched keyboard. Eh, it's a little much, but airport card, 12 bucks. That's about what I'd expect to pay. $250? Really? $200? Really? I mean, I guess these things are... Yeah, here we go. 50 bucks? Damaged. How damaged were you? Cracked casing. I ordered this iMac as a mint collector's item, but FedEx dropped it on the concrete in front of my house, destroying it. It's in a damaged state. The iMac is of no use to me, but it needs parts around. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that... In rough shape, but 50 bucks. $122. Then I guess if you really want a snow one, yeah, 100 bucks. Yeah, anything, anything higher than that is... I don't know, just a little bit silly to me. Maybe I'm wrong. That is... I, I, I don't know. Don't know. About 10, 15 bucks for an airport card. Okay. I don't know how that came up in the search, but uh, we got an iSub here. Very cool. Yeah, I, I really, I guess it's people not having access to this stuff. You want it, you really want it for 200 bucks, I guess, but. A 400 megahertz one for $300? Are you kidding me? Yeah, well, this. Sure, if you want to buy it, who knows? Um, oh, sorry, just catch up in the chat here. Uh, but, but, but old man yells at cloud. That is exactly this stream. That is exactly uh, this stream here. The graphite clamshell closing tonight. Well, I'm sure there's a lot of graphite clamshells. I have my own uh, graphite clamshell. Ending soonest. 68 bucks. That's not bad. I'm sure that price is going to go higher in 15 hours. 
It looks like being in great shape, though. That was a crack on the back. That was a 366 model? With a firewire, maybe? Maybe. Of course, you're not showing the ports. Maybe you do. Got an airport card in there. Uh, how much memory you got? You got 128 megs of memory. No firewire, so just the USB model. Eh, that's all right. But uh, oh, the clamshell killer. He's the worst. He's the worst. Yeah, there's there's hardly any way to ship one of these big old things without uh, those IMAX without damaging them. But uh, seventeen dollars for a bottom bezel. That's actually not too bad. Oh, this is the guy. Here's the guy. The guy that destroys them. I believe this is the guy. Yeah. What is wrong with some people? PVT prototype. Yeah. Let's see how much you screwed up this one. Um, yeah. From what I recall, um, a lot of these units ended up being uh, a lot of the early prototype units ended up being just shipped regularly because you know they were just running the production run i'm sure i have one that says pvt on it i'm not going to get 1900 dollars for it because i'm not high on some drug um oh god oh this, this is just eye cancer right here no thank oh, is this and this this is this is the horrible stuff that this this guy must have a disease in his brain i mean look at that that is just absolutely disgusting this poor iBook that he could probably... Again, prototypes. How convenient. They're all prototypes. Oh my goodness. What the heck is wrong with you, dude? Very special. Yeah, special as in diseased. Special as in put the poor iBook down. No returns, no refunds. Gee, I wonder why. One of a kind. Like a turd is one of a kind. I could say a lot more, but I'm, I'm not going to. It just gets me angry. Anger's up the blood. Ugh. I have one of these posters. Key cap replacements. I think that's enough eBay for now. I'm going to get too, I'm going to get too excited. I'm going to get too excited. Yeah, I don't think anybody's going to buy those things. They've been up on eBay for ages. Nobody wants to buy it. Nobody wants to buy it. Yeah, that guy, that guy's been listing that stuff for ages. Um, for whatever reason, he's very special and thinks that people are going to buy those horribly disfigured and disformed computers because they're rare. Any rarity and value of that computer, I will tell you now, has been stripped away by any of that guy's tinkering around. Um... I think that that graphite iBook is worth $100, $120. If you're okay with the fact that it doesn't have Firewire, if that's of no concern to you, and you have to think about the hard drive that's in there will need to be replaced, because those hard drives are not fun to replace, but they will probably need to be replaced. If you're comfortable with doing that, and the machine is in perfectly working condition otherwise, um, if that if it's worth it to you, that's not a bad price. That I wouldn't say that's a bad price. Any clamshell iBook for about a hundred bucks with the power adapter that's in working condition, I don't think is a, a bad price. Uh, I've even seen Keem Lime ones, you know, the rare Key Lime special edition ones. I've seen them go for only like two hundred bucks. It's really when you get some crackpot on eBay who tries to sell them for a lot higher and starts a bidding war. But good deals are still to be found out there. Um, yeah, the only problem if you if you don't have FireWire, I'm just gonna warn you. Getting an operating system onto there, you're going to have to use the original CD drive. Um, you can't really boot off a USB on those things. So, yeah. So that's that's going to be a little bit of a problem. I do have I do have uh, a bunch of those Jaguar posters. I have to uh, I I will part with them. I seriously will. Uh, I have to get uh, I have to get a hold of them. They're not in the best condition, but I have about uh, ten or so of them uh, that I don't need. So, yeah, you could get them much cheaper than that too. Hello, William. All right, so let's let's see what we're else going to do today. Uh, somebody sent me a Macintosh Plus board, and they were having some issues with it. So let me um, put on the Be Right Back thing. I'm going to go grab that off the shelf because it's a bit high up. I don't want to fall. Um, and I'm going to grab a bottle of water because I've been talking too much. So I'll be back in like five minutes or so, not even. 
Uh, but I'm going to grab that, and we'll look at that next. Um, so stay tuned, and uh, I will be right back momentarily. And uh, I have to edit uh, that text there. There we go. All right, be right back. All right, so we are back with a big box. We have uh, some goodies in here. Let's take out what we have. Dance party! All right, so we have some memory modules. We're gonna keep those in the box. Don't need those uh, right here. Uh, <laughs> you guys are having fun. All right, so let's take a look. Uh, I'm just gonna open up my fancy ticketing system here. Thank you, Bruce. Uh, just to make sure I have the right information about this particular model. And so someone sent this in uh, to get repaired here. And I just wanna make sure I have the right information. This actually might've been sent to me before the ticketing system because I am just backlogged on a lot of stuff. So let me just double check here. Okay. Not it. Let's see if I can find this. Yeah, this guy um, was having problems, I believe, with the SCSI connectivity on his Macintosh Plus. Uh, nope, wrong guy. Nope, that's not it. So this this might have been. Um, Where'd this guy come from? Yeah, this guy uh, might have contacted me through Facebook. Let me just try that. Sorry, guys. Does this have a date on it? Yes, March. Yes, that's how long this thing's been sitting around here. Right, guys just uh, taking the time here to review this make sure I have all the proper information here yeah this was definitely a, uh, a Facebook special here so <laughs> let me contact that guy uh, let's see I need to know did he ever find the hard drive no my pro brother is probably still looking for his hard drive <laughs> oh boy yeah the Macintosh classic I'd honestly set your sights on the Macintosh classic too 
everything as as good as a Macintosh classic, but better. It's two. Gives you more memory. Uh, it's a little bit snappier. Uh, let's see. Uh, just trying to find out where this would have been. Nope. It's always fun when you forget where things are. Um, and this was before Bruce's fancy uh, system here. So let's log into here. Oh, do I remember my password? This is very exciting to watch, I'm sure. Um, yeah, the Macintosh Classic is, is decent, but uh, the Classic 2 is much better, I would say. Uh, gives you a lot more flexibility there. Okay, so let's just do another search here. And if not, we'll just take a look at the board anyway. But I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure this was uh, one of these uh, Facebook folks that was like, hey, you know, work. Last, last try here. Yeah, well, I'll have to find out. I think it was uh, basically they were getting uh, some issues here. So I'm going to take a look at it in the microscope. We'll see if we find anything weird. And we'll go from there. But uh, I'm not going to bore you guys as I try and endlessly find out what the heck is going on here. Um, I'm pretty sure it was on Twitter or Reddit or one of those things where somebody contacted me. And I'm, I'm not going to try logging in through all my accounts and <laughs> sorting through all that stuff here. Uh, I use a very fancy schmancy beta ticketing system. Uh, that my good friend Bruce from Bikus Creations hooked me up with. Uh, I'm a beta tester, so it's not uh, something I believe that's available really to anyone else at the moment. But I am very thankful to be a beta tester. Otherwise, my stuff would be all over the place. But um, yeah, if you want to run 7.5, uh, I would recommend a Classic 2. Much more memory. And even then, 7.5 is not the best on, on something like that uh but and i would you know say get an lc or something like that but um okay anyway we have the board right here this is a macintosh plus board uh so this guy had problems with the rom and uh it was not it was not booting to anything on the external scuzzy bus and he was having problems with that i don't have a uh, plus chassis that's ready to just plug this into so I'm just taking a look at the board right now we won't be able to test this or anything um, I'm seeing a lot of dirt and dust on here I wouldn't be surprised if something is just bridged here the board overall looks very clean I know he did get replacement ROMs from somebody else um, to try and uh, rule out that issue but let's take a look at this under the board see if we can find anything uh, under the microscope rather see if we can find anything that uh, screams problematic but uh, I don't think so. I think this will hopefully be pretty nice and pretty. All right, let's see here. So first thing, I'm just going to check something here. Because I do see there might just be some sticker residue. Tantalum capacitors are not a lot more, really. Um, but not everything is available in a tantalum. Wow, look at those old capacitors. Look at this old stuff. Really cool. Thermal tape printer. Oh, that's pretty cool. I love that old stuff. Let me just make some uh, room on my desk here because this board is hitting into some things. That's a floppy port there. Got some axial caps here. That's just a sticker. Well, thank you very much, Frederick. I'm glad you enjoy the microscope view. So that's just a little sticker that's not doing anybody any harm. Don't really have to worry about that. Again, I can't really test this right now. I'm just taking a cursory look 
around just to see if I spot anything out of the ordinary, any corrosion on chips or anything like that. There's a good amount of dust on here, so I would not be surprised if there's something just a little bit corroded and not really making a connection anymore, etc. So we have the uh, resistors here to control the RAM size. <laughs> and... Yeah, so we have our reset and interrupt switches. Now I believe... So here's the uh, SCSI port here. And so we have a resistor there and a capacitor there. We have this chip here. Now I'm really not an expert on the Macintosh Plus. I, I, this is the first Macintosh Plus I've looked at in a while. Um, live and in color. Well, thank you very much, Frederick. I greatly appreciate it. Um, so it's very interesting to me because I, I don't I don't really get a lot of these machines that have problems, but uh, it could be a bad memory module or a bad chip or something like that, just causing all sorts of weird issues. Um, because you know these things are getting all up there in age. They're you know this one has a copyright date of 1985 on the board, so this is certainly you know, 35 plus years old at this point. We have a bit, no diode for external SCSI power. Okay, thank you very much, Thomas, for letting me know. We do have, you know, just a little bit of dust. I wouldn't say it's even corrosion. There's just some yellow gunk there. Again, I don't think that's necessarily causing a problem. So here are those fancy ROM chips that uh, they had uh, installed here. And use filters on your live stream like a film projector filter. I, uh, any filters that I would do on my camera on the live stream would take up precious CPU resources, and I don't see the need to do any of that stuff. Um, yeah, see, there's there's a lot of this, a lot of this type of dirt and grime on the board. Uh, this would definitely benefit from a cleaning. I'm not going to say that's going to solve the issue here. But you never know, especially in areas like this. Let me zoom in here. Magnify. And let's uh, focus a little bit here. So you can see how much dust there is around the base of those. I wouldn't be surprised if something is, you know, conductive. I'm just, you know, making a connection that shouldn't. Yes, uh, we've all we've all gotten rid of things that we regret. Uh, while we're looking at this board here, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to a pretty spot here so you guys can can take a look at some of the neat little components. Uh, I'm gonna I'm just it's driving me crazy. I'm gonna see if I could find uh, the social media post where I got in touch with this individual. I have their name. Just trying to figure out. Uh, let's see who sent the darn thing. Okay, that's not it. Maybe it was on uh, this. Because I'm, I'm, it's, it's uh, stretching my memory of me trying to remember exactly what the heck was going on with this machine. It is not fixed yet, Bruce, unfortunately. So this is a Macintosh Plus. I'm trying to look up the original uh, ticket here. My brother found his hard drive. How about that? <laughs> but he has a Firewire hard drive plugged into a Thunderbolt to Fire uh, Thunderbolt uh, to Firewire adapt. No, Firewire to Thunderbolt adapter. Then a Thunderbolt two to Thunderbolt three adapter. Oh my goodness! He says it's effing Dongle Town over here. <laughs> oh, oh, that's great. Okay, so let's uh, get back to our serious business here. Get my phone here. Sorry, just uh, checking this here. I know it's boring. Take a bathroom break, go get a snack.
it doesn't help that people use different usernames and such and it's Yeah, this was definitely something from uh, Reddit. I think I was tagged in something, and then I emailed the individual. So let's try and that's what I was doing. I was looking at my password here. Yeah, emulation on Macs is actually not a uh, a bad thing. Now th the thing that trips me up is the emulation for like Basilisk or Sheep Shaver. Look, it's it's pretty good for what it is, but that stuff um, it seems to be very laggy. For uh, maybe it's just me. Uh, the, the cursor gets to be laggy, and, and sometimes it's just too much for me to handle. Because maybe I'm just used to, you know, the uh, the actual responsiveness of it. But if that's what you got to deal with, and that's, you know, that's what you got the space for, I understand. Oh, darn it, what was that? You will be logged in. Good. All right, so let's save that here. Check my my things here. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. So Sheep Shaver, I've had better luck with, but uh, it, may, it may it might just be like who knows the configuration I have, the image I'm using. Um, I mean, that stuff you, you wouldn't think takes up a lot of memory, but uh, you'd be surprised. Uh, I I usually just play around with it just for a quick look around. Uh, <laughs> He got lag by swapping logic ports. Yeah, the graphics acceleration, that's the, the real big thing there. Uh, that's the, the problem. Here we go. Um, no. This is driving me crazy. And uh, you don't want to hear me apologize anymore, so I won't. I'm just looking here. Wow, this browser is being slow here. Oh, Wing Commander. Oh gosh, I haven't played Wing Commander in a while. While we guys, while we wait uh, to look at some of this stuff, um, let's talk about some old Mac games. My goodness, Wing Commander, that takes me back. That. My goodness. Uh, another uh, Rebel Assault was a fun one. I remember playing that a lot. It didn't run too well, but I remember playing the heck out of that one. I don't know if anybody was a, a fan of that. I was a fan of that one. Uh, what's another good one? What's another... Oopsie. There goes my cursor here. Put that back there. Um, Unreal Tournament was a fantastic one. Uh, Two-factor authentication. Yeah, that's always the fun stuff here. Well, come on. Did you send me the darn code or no? <laughs> yeah, Two-factor authentication. Yeah, you can actually send me the code to log in or are we just going to sit here? We might just be sitting here for a minute. Maybe. Didn't receive a code. Yeah. Text me. Thank you. My goodness. Oregon Trail. That's a good one. I remember playing the Apple II version a lot in school because we had a lab of Apple IIs. They were old then. It was the mid '90s or so, or late '90s, um, but that was fun. Lemmings, I like Lemmings. It's a it's a little fast paced for me. I, I get uh, confused easily. Marathon's a good one. Marathon is a good one. Oh man, you guys are you guys are gonna want to make me uh, play? A oh yeah, X Wing versus Tie Fighter. Ah, oh, Carmageddon, Bruce. Oh, that's a that's an excellent one. Carmageddon. I remember playing Carmageddon too. Um, Let's see, we have, I'm just trying to think of some, some good games there. My goodness, a lot of good stuff. Keep them coming in the chat. So Oregon Trail, Marathon, Marathon Infinity, all those are good. Oregon Trail was good. Alone in the Dark, that spooky one. TIE Fighter, X-Wing vs. TIE Fighter, all the, basically any LucasArts game. That's <laughs> fantastic. 
I hate how social media tells you things that are like X amount of weeks ago. Like, just tell me the darn date. I don't, I don't need to go know how many days or seconds ago something was. Okay, I did a search and nothing refreshed on this. This is maddening. Maddening! Absolutely maddening! Yeah, I don't think I'm going to find this anytime soon. Well, that's annoying because I'm really curious of, of the exact issue here. But I'm going to have to sink into my email. But Duke Nukem 3D out of Quadra 610. That sounds painful, to be honest with you. That sounds painful. I know, Logan. They forgot to smash the like button. That's okay. It's late. Probably sleeping. So I'm just taking a look at this Macintosh Plus board that someone sent me to uh, resolve some scuzzy issues with. And um, I'm not seeing too much. I mean, there's a lot of dust here. I'm not seeing anything that's blown or anything that is of questionable state i mean this whole board looks pretty darn clean uh, i mean there's there's a lot of areas here that could be cleaned up a bit a lot of dust uh you know maybe uh something is is no longer where it has to be maybe something is is under one of these legs or bridging something could totally be the case look at this chunky processor though my goodness sixty-eight thousand. Was it uh, 8 megahertz? All of 8 megahertz? Making sure all those legs look okay. These memory slots, things like to hide inside these memory slots. So you always want to look, make sure nothing's bridging anything. I had that happen on a Macintosh SE30 somebody sent me. Could be a lot of bad things, could be a lot of bad chips. Uh, I don't really have too many spare Macintosh Plus parts, but uh, I told the individual I'd, I'd take a look at it for him. And I have his name and his email, so I'll have to, I have to email him and be like, Oops, I had lost your information. How'd you contact me? And go through that embarrassing ordeal. But that was before I had my ticketing system in place, and that's the, the lie I'm going to continue to tell myself. Um, so this is a four-layer board. Interesting. Yeah, there's a lot of dirt on here. Uh, I'm going to clean this up and see if that would uh, fix anything. Uh, things seem to be pretty good. This is a uh, Macintosh Plus board. Peanut butter in the external scuzzy slot. Oh, uh, boy. So let's uh, adjust the focus here. So you can see on the bottom of the board here. And this thing looks absolutely in, in pretty darn good condition. It looks like there's some flux there. Where was this on the board? That's by one of the capacitors, but... Yeah, I could I could take a deeper look at this once I I would need to, to get a plus chassis out to uh, power one of these things on and make sure that the board is is operating okay I see some areas where I don't know if that's flux or, or somebody replaced some of the axles here I'm not sure it could just be you know from the factory and that flux has been there for 35 years um, <laughs> But yeah, so we might we might skip this. We might go on to the uh, Macintosh SE30 board uh, that uh, I know has some issues. So uh, put this in the bag here. And have to come back to this another day. Let's see if I could get the uh, the other board out here. Okay, so I have another uh, SE30 board. I believe it's in the box from the individual, and I believe that's stacked up over here. So let me go grab that real quick. Actually, it might be over here. Here it is. So this is a Macintosh SE30. Uh, let's take a look at the chat. Sorry, guys. Been uh, missing out here. I played Doom 2 on a 25 megahertz uh, 68040 CPU. That's a Centris 650. It was uh, showing out in my latest video. 
actually wasn't too bad. Hey, Joshua, we're actually looking at uh, at uh, your your SE30. How about the timing of that, Joshua? My goodness, pretty good, huh? Uh, a friend has a G3 desktop. Any cap issues before putting it back into service? Uh, generally speaking, um, the G3, if it's a beige or a blue and white, they should not have any issues. However, it never hurts to take a look just to make sure that there is nothing uh, weird going on with it. That's what I would say. Okay, so Joshua's uh, ears were burning because we we're talking about an SE30. And sure enough, it's back on the table here. So welcome, Joshua. So... Uh, the particular problem with this SE30 is that it worked great, and then it just uh, it stopped. And this uh, went through the cleaner. Um, before we got it, we'll have to go through the cleaner again. I just want to take a brief look at it here. Um, and so basically, once I, I start the ultrasonic cleaner, I do like three boards in a row, because it's just one of those things. Uh, live and in color! And uh, just taking a look here, make sure. I thought I saw something here no it's just there's some leftover flux and junk oh this will wash away once it's in the cleaner but i just want to double check some of the areas here um especially uh by the row of these u chips so we have u g8 u f8 u e8 etc and uh we did some work over here last time and uh just want to make sure that all this stuff is happy uh, yeah we definitely have some little areas with the touch up with some UV solder mask but that was gonna be step two of this and then when I went to go test it before uh, doing some additional things here unfortunately uh, it booted up to uh, the little zebra stripes that we got so uh, I know for a fact that when we tested this on the live stream everything was fine so it could be something as simple as a little piece of metal or gunk just touches something it, it should not be. Uh, and, a, and a solid cleaning should resolve that. That would be a little embarrassing if an ultrasonic clean would solve all three of these boards that we were just looking at today. I swore I, I cleaned them, but um, unfortunately uh, I was working on these boards right before uh, some stuff went down and I uh, lost a lot of time that I was not able to spend with these machines. So it's a rare instance where I sort of have to, uh, you know, start a little bit further back and continue. But uh, I have my notes I can refer back to, um, and I have the live streams, which are great because if I did something, it's on the stream. So original Macintosh, that's a nice gift. Yes, it does have a little bit of a plastic missing. Um, and I did, I did put in, um, excuse me, I did put in uh, some memory modules there to keep that in in place. Uh, we'll, we'll turn this on again during the stream, just to make sure we're not missing anything here. <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, I know uh, we did have some problems uh, tinkering around with uh, the high density memory that you had. But uh, it did cooperate eventually. And yeah, so just taking a look around this board, see if I spot anything out of ordinary here. Um, I did replace the fuse here. So this fuse was for the uh, SCSI bus. That fuse was blown. So I replaced that fuse. I'll be doing a video about that. So here's the original one, the yellow. That's what they look like here. That's fuse two. So F3, this fuse blue. And so I just uh, replaced it with a 1 amp, 125 volt fuse. And uh, that would resolve the SCSI issues once <laughs> the machine uh, wants to work correctly again, that is. But, uh, okay. Let me just take a look around here. I still have your ROM sim sitting in here. Let me uh, just carefully remove that so we could look at it under the board without that poking through. Let me take a drink of water here because I keep talking. A fuse uh, of this kind can be blown easily. Um, it's, it's very easy to do if you hot swap SCSI devices or if uh, a SCSI device is drawing too much power or some weird stuff like that. Uh, very easily uh, something like that could happen. So, uh, But 
Uh, very easy to tell if a fuse is blown. You get your multimeter out. I'll tell you pretty quickly if the, the fuse has a problem there. And you could go ahead and replace it. So, just going to make sure some of this stuff is uh, still looking okay. Again, this will go through the ultrasonic cleaner. I'm seeing very, like, a, a little solder ball here and there, so it could be very possible something is just touching something it shouldn't. These boards are very sensitive, and they'll give those those weird zebra stripes and those jail bar patterns pretty much just for fun, you know, if it really wants to, I found. So. Yeah, I mean, it could be as uh, simple as the diode here or the fuse. Just use uh, your multimeter here and... Uh, for example, give you a, a quick demo. Turn on the multimeter here. We're in continuity mode. Then we get a beep, which is nice. Same thing there. So these fuses are operating correctly. But if they're blown, you will uh, you will not get that continuity there. So. That solder ball went a little bit flying, but we'll uh, we'll clean that up uh, while we have the multimeter out. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, I think this is a good candidate for clean. Yeah, I remember taking these chips off and fixing some of the fun stuff under here. Oh, goodness, that was fun. It's all coming back to me. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna try and turn this machine back on. Uh, the the thing between the fuses is a diode. This little guy here is a diode that could also be failed or out of whack and could cause the SCSI bus to act weirdly or not at all so we definitely need to look at that i'm just checking the back of the board here uh, there was a bodge wire from the factory that seems to be still in good shape i don't see any resistors or anything that have fallen off i do see some dust and, and crud that will be cleaned off once this goes to the ultrasonic cleaner but nothing that would have caused uh well who knows who knows dust could be weird could be conductive. This is just uh, stuff that's sticking to the flux here. Yeah, so we'll get that uh, SE chassis out. So you can look at the pretty board here for a moment. Uh, you can look at one of the culprits that usually cause problems. UE8 or any of these UE chips uh, can cause a lot of problems on these machines, unfortunately. So I'm going to put this uh, Mac Classic chassis in a safe place. And I'll be right back with the SE one and hopefully... We can uh, work some magic here and try and get that to boot up correctly because it was before and we want to make sure we can do it again. Okay. How about we try and keep it on topic here, guys, in the chat? Going to get into some weird states here. All right, so I'm going to move the camera here. Well, we're going to try at least because the microscope is in the way. So, here's 
is the uh, Macintosh SE chassis that I use for my testing. It is not in the best condition. It does have some issues. It likes to make whining noises, but you know what? We all like to get cranky and whine sometimes, don't we? Yes, we do. So, uh, we're going to be testing this guy. I'm going to bring it a little bit closer here. And I have this uh, ATX extension cable here so I can plug the board in a bit easier. And so, I doubt we really made a difference here, but I'm just going to be curious to see if it's doing the same things it did before. Then we have the separate uh, sound plugs here, just because that cable is not long enough to reach. I have a little extension cable here. And I have a bunch of memory here, so I'm going to test uh, some memory. This will get an ultrasonic clean, no matter if it works now or if it doesn't, and that might just solve the issue. You never know. Um, I believe, and Bruce can correct me on this, I believe bank A, that's the bank of memory that is closest to the ROM SIM. I believe that's the one that needs to be filled with memory. Maybe. Bruce will correct me if I'm wrong and he's yelling at his uh, screen right now. No, you idiot. It's the other thing. Let's see. Where's the, where's the other one I had here? Oh, did I put that in the, uh, in that board? there maybe no wait the uh classic two board did i take the memory out of that yes it did okay um so let me just find let's see i have these guys here these are all one meg they're a little bit different and i don't want to don't want to mix them up here that should be fine um yes i'm not going to be using the the larger sims here i just want to try and stick to uh, some of the just the standard one meg modules here, just for testing purposes. And I did put a little piece of cardboard in here where the first uh, module is. Um, yes, exactly, Joshua. I remember that. Uh, just to make sure that these are, uh, you know, just firmly in there. And this is just a basic test. Just want to make sure things are going to. Uh, try and operate correctly. I do have two ROM sims here. I have yours and I have mine. Uh, that slot uh, should be fine with either, but it never hurts to uh, to try another. Okay, so that's in place here. All right, so that is plugged in. Let's plug in the SE30. And give you guys a bit of a better look there. There we go. And see if we have any difference here. If not. This will this will need a good cleaning for sure. So it does chime. Hey, look at that! No more stripes. Yeah, so I think there's just some crud on that board there, but that's okay. We'll be able to clean that up there. But I am glad it was just some tidying up there. Sometimes it's just as simple as that. Um, it might also be the ROMSIM slot is a little dirty or something like that. Let's um, turn this off. I'm going to plug in my blue SCSI adapter here. And we'll see if we could get this, uh, some life of it. Um, it will, actually no, we don't need the blue SCSI. I'll just boot off of the uh, floppy drive here. That will save us some time. So I'm as uh, happy as you guys are, but of course I want to do some tests with this. I don't want to send it back to Joshua and all of a sudden it doesn't work again. So that's where it's going to go. Uh, through the ultrasonic cleaner and all that fun stuff. Oops, wrong menu on the floppy MU. We have to go back. We'll boot to a System 6 disk. That should come up pretty quickly. There we go. Got a happy Mac here. Welcome to Macintosh. How about that? So we didn't, really didn't do much. Uh, there was just some little solder balls I removed from the board. That could be as simple as that. There's also a lot of uh, little dust on there. So we'll be cleaning that stuff off of the board in the ultrasonic cleaner. We'll be doing that uh, sometime soon. And I'll be doing some software and hardware tests just to make sure nothing else is going on here. But look at that. 
Now, there is a bit of a whining noise coming from this machine. That is the analog board. Happens with any of the boards that I plug into this thing. That is not uh, the fault of the board here. But that is awesome. So with the uh, 4 megabytes of memory in and the ROM SIM in there, this thing works fine. Yeah, the screen's a bit off. It, it has to be adjusted. But uh, this is my tester. There's a little sticker on there that says tester. This is the machine I use for my testing. So it doesn't have to be perfect. <laughs> Awesome. Another one uh, seems to be in happy working order, which is great because it was working fine before. So it's just one of those things where sometimes you, know, you can move the board around a little bit. A solder ball gets lodged somewhere and then it gets unhappy. So uh, this is another candidate for, for uh, that. Uh, with that fuse fixed, that is uh, good news. Actually, you know what? Let me uh, let me do plug in that uh, SCSI to a C adapter. Just to confirm, the fuse is in good condition. Uh, where'd that SCSI cable go? I just pulled it off of the other machine. Here it is. We're gonna, we're gonna deck this thing out. I'm gonna get uh, SCSI and floppy. Just to test things out. Wanna make sure that fuse we installed is doing its job. If it is, we should know pretty much the second we turn this on, because we'll see some power activity uh, there. Uh, and where did that go? Where did I? It's a, I'm just losing everything today. My, my mind is a, is a mess. I know. Oh, yes. I will be recapping the analog board on this for sure. It is just something that I have not had the chance to do. So there we go. All right. So let's turn this thing on again. Okay, let's get a keyboard and a mouse here. Be able to do some damage with this thing. Here's our keyboard. Won't be doing too much with this, but I just want to make sure that we can get into the menus and stuff like that. Does it matter which connector you plug the floppy cable into? Well, in the Macintosh SE, there's only one. So uh, I plug it in directly to the internal one. I can plug it into the external one. It's not going to make uh, too much of a difference in this particular scenario. And I unplug the sound. Just let me plug that back in here. We like to hear the chime to make sure everything is happy. And this just goes to show you how sometimes these machines can get very picky. You know, they work and they don't work, etc. So we want to make sure that they are as solid as can be before we send anything back. Unlike some other individuals, um, not anybody here, but I'm just saying, unlike some other recapping places that don't really specialize in Macs, um, they may not be able to test things thoroughly. I test things thoroughly. Alright, so that might try and start up off of the uh, blue SCSI there. We are getting a light on there, which is good. So that means the SCSI port is powering that. It's probably a little confused because the... Probably doesn't like the, uh, yeah, <laughs> it doesn't like that at all. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna switch here. Uh, let me just do a restart here, and it'll boot off of the floppy instead of the SCSI drive. <laughs> it's not too happy with the partition I have on there. Yeah, I mean I I can't guarantee these things work if I don't test them, and that's exactly why I test them. Uh, what were we saying, Brian? Uh, have you ever seen a floppy uh, drive stop reading disk when the eject motor is installed? I've got three drives. I just placed the gear on, and they're only working with the motor removed. Very curious. Uh, I Again, unfortunately, I have not um, played around with the floppy drive repair just yet, but I'm sure somebody else has some experience with that area. Could I use both floppy connectors with a real floppy and a floppy MU? I believe you can. I don't think there's any limit on that. Uh, I'm, I've not tested that before, but uh, I don't believe you would run into an issue. I'm seeing both of the hard drives here, both of the partitions here, which is excellent. So the SCSI uh, port is now working fully, which is fantastic. So we have a system here. We have our finder somewhere. Here it is. I know you guys can't really see this that well, but uh, there we go. Uh, I'm just curious if, uh, if we could start up.
we could start. I think because that has system seven on the other partition here. I'm not sure. It might just yell at us when we try and start up again. How are you running Linux on a PlayStation 4? That question to me? I'm not. We'll see if this wants to start up off the uh, SCSI device. It may not. It just it has to be the specific software I have installed on here. Oh, right, there we go. Start off the SCSI drive. I think this is 7.1 I have here. Or, never mind. <laughs> it's a bit later. Uh, yeah, the buttons can be a little finicky on, this, on the floppy MU, but usually just wiggle them around a bit and they'll be okay. Yeah, that uh, analog board makes a lot of squeaky noises. I'm sure that's good for it. Rebuilding the desktop file. That's going to take a while. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> we don't need to do that. Yeah, it's like whenever there's data activity, there's a whine on the board. So not exactly sure why. Uh, but there we go. Four megs of memory running system 755. Poor little guy. We'll shut you down. We'll keep you happy. So, excellent. That's another mystery solved, which is good. So, now all those three problematic SE30s that I received are pretty much ready to go back. One has already been shipped back. Uh, uh, Joshua's has to be ultrasonically clean cleaned. Tim's has to be ultrasonically cleaned. The other Tim. And uh, they... Should be good to go, which is excellent. Hey, Chris, thanks for stopping by. <laughs> Tim says thanks. Well, you are very, very welcome. I am glad we could save another Macintosh here. Uh, the Macintosh SE30 is one of those particular machines where, unfortunately, uh, a lot of them seem to just get very bad luck with the capacitors. And... Uh, you know, just one of those machines that's a shame to have go badly because they, they are quite sought after because they are a compact Mac and they have that uh, that uh, faster processor here. And so it's, it's a shame when those go bad. Um, I think there are, are less and less of them every day, unfortunately. Yes, exactly. I'm glad to see another SE30 live on again as well. Put this keyboard off to the side here okay so we've been going for a bit over two hours now um i'm gonna be uh looking at another board i don't know if sean is still here sean are you still awake you still awake sean Let's see if sean's still awake here he might know exactly why i'm asking him that but he might have jumped off ages ago Unless he's running to the keyboard now. Oh, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Hey, Alexander, welcome to the stream. <laughs> Let's do Sean's anyway. Well, I don't think we're going to get much progress on it because it, it is uh, past 11 p.m. Let's just take a look at it before we end here. Um, because I want to take a look at the SE30 board he sent me. So this will be a little a sneak peek for any of you guys. So let me uh, go grab that. Okay, so make sure there's no identifying uh, labels on this guy before we start holding boxes up and this and that. All right, so this is from Sean, aka Action Retro, and this is yet another cursed Macintosh SE30. My goodness, I'm trying to film a five inch CRT. Well, that sounds like fun. Sean were here, I'd ask him exactly what was going on with this. Uh, I think 
essentially he was having trouble um, with it not behaving sometimes. My goodness, he has, uh, <laughs> he has 64 megabytes of RAM on this sucker. Uh, and the serial number of this is CK13446Y00YA. That's on the logic board here. Oh my goodness, this guy needs some love. Oh, yeah, this is going to make for a good video. Every time Sean sends me something, it's video worthy. And this is no different. Bruce, you might want to cover your, your eyes here. Um, I'm pretty sure every single one of these U chips are going to have to be removed and potentially replaced. There's green all over them. I mean, these ones aren't so bad, but let's look at this one. UF8. Oh, F indeed. My goodness, Sean, you sure know how to pick them. <laughs> This one may need some special attention. Wow. Yes, yeah, so that is, uh, that capacitor has surely leaked. And under that chip looks like a pile of fun, too. And you could, you could just usually tell on a board like this because all the dust and stuff is sticking to the gooey bits of the capacitors that have leaked. So you can see the dust here. Uh, this this leg is completely green. My goodness. Uh, it did work. Did. As in previous. I have never seen that happen before. Wow, look how bad th these are. I mean, this is... Oh, my goodness. Yeah, this is just... Yeah, this has to go for like an hour in the ultrasonic cleaner. Yeah, there is no shiny bits on this board. And look, look at just the amount of, like, stuff between these. I'm surprised this thing worked as it was. I mean, I don't think it was used as a boat anchor, but it wouldn't surprise me if this thing had some maritime action here. Um, yeah, this looks fun. Oh, good. Every, every corner of this chip. I don't know if this is just old flux or what but it has this it has sort of a flux look to it but i i really don't know what what was going on with this thing uh, this is um this is a thousand dollar repair if i ever saw one. <laughs> yeah this is quite quite nasty it's not his fault you know he's, he's probably got it used or whatever there's some nice metal bits hanging around in here uh, a lot of them, actually. So I don't know if this was attempted to be uh, repaired at some point, or someone looked at this and went, "Oh, never mind," and uh, forgot about it. We do have a newer PRAM battery in here, so thankfully that's not the old one here. There's that uh, serial number I mentioned: CK one three four four six Y zero zero Y A. The ROM sims in there, at least. Yeah, I mean. These actually look okay. That's good. It's surprising. Yeah, with a lot of cleaning, I don't think uh, this should have a problem. I'm not seeing any extensive damage to traces, but what does concern me is the amount of goo and gunk inside of these chips. I mean, just let's let's look closer at this because this is absolutely disgusting. Just look at that. That shouldn't be. There should not be this much junk inside uh, of the cavity between these connectors there. I mean, just, it's really hard to tell if this is old, it looks like old flux, but yeah. I, I mean, everything just needs it. This needs a good cleaning here. I, it's like flux and hair, capacitors. I, don't, I really don't know what to make of it. I'll have to talk to him and see exactly the history behind this board but it is not happy we're not going to be turning this on until it has had a nice spa day um <laughs> oh my goodness a lot of dust bunnies on here is that a little solder ball i see 
Yeah, we have a little solder ball hanging out here. So who knows where this board came from um, and what condition it was in before he got it. I believe he said the machine worked at some point, which is a bit surprising looking at the condition it's in. Uh, because, oh my goodness, look, look at this. It is green with envy. Look at that. Yeah, we're going to need a lot more than holy water and IPA to, to get this working. Because, yeah, this green stuff is touching each other. It's probably shorting stuff out. Yeah, well, Sean's did, Sean did send it to me. So this is definitely cursed. Uh, we will probably have a whole stream just based on this machine. But I just wanted to take it out of the box here because uh, now that we have um, two of the other machines ready to send back, uh, it was time to open up another SE30 box here and take a look at it. Uh, this is just disgusting the way that the hair and stuff is on this, but we'll get this all cleaned up. Let's see. Oh, this poor little guy. Oh, boy. Ch -ch 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 -chia. Yeah, <laughs> it's like an SE that grows green. Yeah, so th this board is going to need uh, a good... I'm going to... If I was to estimate how much time this is going to take to do, probably about five hours, six hours, maybe a little bit more than that, just for the cleaning, removing a lot of these chips. I, like I said, I don't know if this is flux or what. It looks like flux. The color of it looks like flux. But then when I go to some of these these chips here, it looks like a mixture of flux and corrosion and leaking capacitors, and I, I don't I really don't know. So we're gonna have we're gonna have a stern talking to with that young man, and find out what in God's name this poor machine was going through, and see if we could get it to work again. Um, I don't think it's too far gone. I think it's just gonna require a lot of work and patience. And hopefully that'll make for some good YouTube material about that. But uh, we're not going to really do much more than that today uh, on this particular machine because this one's going to require a lot of work and I could tell just by looking at that. Um, my goodness. So we're going to put this back in the bag here. And it's getting pretty late, so I'm probably going to sign off. Anybody have any questions or any, any thoughts of anything else? I'll talk about some stuff before I sign off about some projects that you could see from me fairly soon, hopefully. But uh, that is unfortunate that that uh, board is in such a sad state. It is definitely, definitely another cursed Macintosh SE. Clearly. Oh boy. Yeah, this, this board is going to need a lot of love and care. I could tell you that much. Yeah, I, I, I think it, it, I mean, I'm thinking about it. It could only be flux. I mean, really, unless, you know, somebody just poured capacitor juice all over the board. Who knows? But <laughs> that's just my thoughts on the matter. My goodness. Oh, uh, boy. Well, thank you very much, Frederick. Uh, appreciate it. And thank you, everybody, for stopping by. Um, I am working on a number of projects. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm... So I, I was trying to do like a video a week type thing, um, but it's probably more my pace to do a video every two weeks, a scripted video, that is, and do some live streams in between. Uh, so I have a few different projects that I'm working on. Uh, I have one about Macintosh SE30 fuses. I did a little blog post about it on Mac84.net. Uh, you could read that there, but I, I do want to do a video version of that, just basically how I replace the fuse on Joshua's board here. So that was the uh, board I used in the video. So your, your, your board is famous there, Joshua. Um, but yeah, we're going to ultrasonic uh, these boards uh, and have them uh, sent back to their owners, uh, assuming they pass all the hardware tests and all that fun stuff. Um, uh, Chris, would you do me a favor and maybe just not test that? I mean, look, you could do whatever you want, but um, if you turn that on, turn it on very briefly. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm happy for you to be the guinea pig if you want. I'm just concerned at the state it, it is in. But 
Let me know if you see any smoke from that. And if you do, unplug it immediately. <laughs> yeah, Chris picked up a very interesting radius color pivot monitor, uh, which uh, will be finding its way to my basement sometime in the, the future. I have to uh, look at his uh, 2CI. Uh, we got that to work. I recapped it well. But the problem is um, the uh, sound is not working. So we're going to take a look at that. Uh, and uh, Chris gave me a uh, Power Mac All-in-One 5000 series logic board to look at. Uh, and that needs recapping. So we're going to recap that and um, probably do a, a stream on that. And that's interesting because I, I don't really haven't really done any Power Mac uh, boards. But that'll probably be one of the first. So uh, I'll set up a stream for that maybe sometime uh, over the weekend or something like that. And we'll go from there because that sounds like a lot of fun. And hopefully we get Chris's uh, Power Mac all up and running again just like we did with the 2CI. But that's about it for now. I think I'm going to call it quits here. But thank you for hanging around for uh, two, almost two and a half hours here. Um, Quadro or server recaps. Um, I don't think I have it. Well, I do have a Quadro 610 that uh, I recapped. Um, I have to re-recap it, I believe. Um, there is a, a, so I got a, a Quadro 610 that was in the box and everything. Uh, unfortunately, the plastic was a little bit snapped on it. But um, that uh, does work. I, I did have to do some fancy fixes on there. I should I should probably finish the video on that so I could release that. That's an interesting tale. But I'll probably do a stream of fixing that up at this point. I have a lot of stuff to do still. So you'll be seeing a lot more uh, recapping and repair work from my end. But uh, yeah, I'm going to call it quits for today. Have a good night, guys. Uh, take care. Hope uh, you enjoyed this stream. And uh, I'll see you on the next one. If you have not, uh, please like and subscribe. All that good stuff. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. But, uh, yeah, take care, guys. See you later. Bye.